So, first of all, I just want to say I'm very honored to be able to speak here. Aaron asked me to come and bring a word this morning, but I just wanted to share a little story this morning. I I felt like a woman this morning. Not no no offense to you women out there, but um, I. I had to put on my dress clothes eight different times because I haven't, I haven't had dress clothes, I haven't dressed up in like three or four months because at work I just wear jeans. And so uh, I realized I don't fit in anything anymore. So, <laughs> so if I look like I'm wearing a dress today, I, that's why. <laughs> Anyways. Well, praise God. Aaron told me that you already heard uh, a little bit about Aaron's trip, but he wanted me to share that they are having a great time. They were, at a, they were at a football stadium last night with five other Pentecostal churches, and they came together, and he said that they saw revival, baptisms, deliverances, and they've had a uh, word of knowledge given to them last night there in Bonifay, Florida. So he was encouraged. So it sounds like you're going to come back with an encouraged pastor. So praise God for that. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk today about, well, the message is called Setting Up Guidepost. And so the first thing I want to do before we even get started, if you have a piece of paper there and a pen, awesome. If you don't, you can put it in your note, in, in like your phone, in the notes, or remember it. It's up to you. But I want, I want us to write down two different things. The first thing I want us to write down is say something that God has done for this church that only He could do. Not man, but only He could do. Like a testimony. So that could be anything from planning a church to... Uh, something, something that only he can get the glory for. So that's the first thing I want you to write down. So I'll give you 20 seconds to think about that. And when you're done with that, say amen. It's a couple. Okay, and the second thing I want you to write down uh, is something that only in your own life, your own personal walk with God, that He has done that only He could do. Not you, but only He could do that. He could get the glory. So some kind of testimony that you can write in your own personal walk. And then we will revisit these two things at the end. So I just want you to get your thinking tonight. It's almost like I'm a teacher right now. <laughs> and then when you have something there, say amen. amen. One person. Okay, we got two. That sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, this is not going to, well, Turn to Jeremiah 31, verse 21. Well, you don't have to turn there, but put it up here, because I'm not going to really preach out here very much, but just a verse in here that I want to share to begin with. Jeremiah 31, 21 says, and I'm reading from the, uh, the modern English version. I'm not reading from the King James version, so it's a little different, just so you know. Um, I did not bring my King James Bible today. But it just says, set up road marks, place guideposts. Set your heart on toward the highway, even the way by which you went. I'm going to read that one more time. Jeremiah 31, verse 21. Set up road marks, place guideposts. Set your heart on toward the highway, even the way by which you went. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we just worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that at the end of the day... Um, you are in control. You have control of every situation in our life. And, and in our lives, Lord, uh, you've always been there for us, Lord. You've always been guiding and directing us to a certain direction. And so, Lord God, I just want to pray this morning that you would open up our, our hearts and our minds to, to your direction, to your future, to, to what you have for us here today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So what's the definition of a guidepost? The dictionary says... Uh, the first thing it says is it's a post, usually mounted on the roadside or at the intersection of two or more roads, bearing as a sign for the guidance of travelers. Or two, anything serving as a guide. So you don't have to raise your hand right here, but how many of us write down, like in a journal or somewhere, where God, God did something big in our lives? A few of us here. I want to encourage you today that when we do that, 
it, it, it has the power to encourage us down the road. Otherwise, we have a tendency to forget what He has done in our lives. And it's really easy for us to forget, okay, God was faithful here. Why wouldn't He be here faithful today? Okay, now, now I'm going to turn to Joshua. Now I'm going to kind of turn the, the page of what this, this message is. I'm going to go through Joshua chapters 1 through 13. We're going to read every single verse in there. Just kidding. We're not going to do that. But, but we're going to, Joshua, we're going to turn, I'm going to read a few things in there, but I kind of just want to get, get a picture of what God was doing in the book of Joshua and what he was doing in, through Joshua and the people of Israel. So Joshua 1, verses 1 through 10, and I'm just going to read a few. I am going to read the first nine verses here. Joshua 1, verses 1 through 10. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses. Moses, my servant, is dead. So now get up and cross over the Jordan, you and all this people, to the land that I am giving to the children of Israel. I have given you every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this uh, Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, into the Mediterranean Sea, toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall provide the land that I swore to their fathers to give them as inheritance for this people. Be strong and very courageous. That's the second time he said it. It must be important. In order to act carefully in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn aside from it to the right or to the left, so that you may succeed wherever you go. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may act carefully according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way successful, and you will be wise. The third time, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So this was basically the commission that God gave to Joshua. It was a commission. So what I'm going to do in this, in this, the rest of this message is I'm going to relate this to our church. I'm going to relate it to our own personal walks with the Lord. So right here, he was given a commission to Joshua and the Israelites, it's time to inherit your land. It's time to move on to what I have for you to do. And you can, al you can almost compare it to when the Lord gave Aaron and the people, the elders and people who started this church, you can always compare it to the commission that God gave him and gave these people. Listen, I have called you to this place in West Point, Nebraska. I have called you to reach these people. And I don't know how many years ago that was. What was it, seven or eight years ago when, when we planted? Seven? Plus. Seven plus, almost eight in January. Isn't that crazy how quick time, time flies? See, I, I'm, I'm 28 right now, and uh, I think I'm old, but, <laughs> well, if you think about it, I was 21 when I gave my life to Christ, and these last seven years have just gone, flown by, and it just feels like I just graduated college, and I can only imagine what it's like as I continue to get older, but um, it's just crazy how quick this, this life moves on. And the funny thing is, if you think about it, high school went by so slow, right, Callie? High school went by so slow. Well, now you're about to enter your golden years, and you're about to see how quickly life goes. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I would compare Joshua, this part, Joshua, I would compare it to when you became a believer also. You gave your life to Christ, and God says, all right, now I have a commission for you. I have people I want you to reach. I put things inside of you that I want you to, 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 to I guess, see. I have an inheritance I want you to, to inherit. So as we continue in this book, try to make the correlations of the conquest of the promised land with the church or your own life after becoming a Christian. I'm going to turn to Joshua 3, verses 10. And it shouldn't be too far from where you are. And Joshua said, actually, before I do that, I need to give a little backstory here. So that was the commission. In the chapter 2, they sent spies into the land. They, spent, they sent spies into Jericho so that, okay, 
and they see, okay, God has given us into our land. Let's just go and attack them. So then what does God do before Jericho is in chapter 3, he tells them, listen, there's a river right here. There's a river, and I'm telling you to cross at the worst time. The, the banks were overflown. They were flooded. And can you imagine trying to get 600,000 people across a flooded river without any complications? So it's, it's not just like the Lord. He tells us to do something sometimes that doesn't make any sense. You know, a common reason would have said, Joshua, let's wait three, three months until the banks go down. But God said, no, I want you to go right now because I want to get the glory. And I want to, and I want to remind you, along the way as you conquer Israel, I want to remind you of the good things I did for you in the past. It will give you courage. So Joshua 3, verses 10 says, And Joshua said, By this you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will thoroughly drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites from before you. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing before you into the Jordan. Now select twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man per tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, touch the water of the Jordan, the water of the Jordan that flows that upstream will be cut off and pile up. So what's he saying? He's just saying, listen, by this, by this miracle I'm about to do in your midst, you will know that I am going to give you the strength to conquer the rest of this promised land. If I didn't do this miracle for you at the first sign of trouble, you would back down. And then Joshua 4, verses 2 and 3 says, Take twelve men from among the people, one man per tribe. Command them, pick up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the feet of the priests are standing. Bring them over with you, and set them in the place you will camp tonight. And then at verse 6 it says, So that this will be a sign among you, when your children ask, What do these stones mean to you? You will answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones will be a memorial for the children of Israel continually. So what was going on here? They built an altar, so to speak. They built, they piled up rocks to remind themselves and their children of what God did in their midst. Because God knew that if we didn't have a sign, or we didn't have anything like that, we forget so easily what He has done for us in the past. So right here, I'm going to give this comparison. When we moved into the Nielsen Center, when the church moved into the Nielsen Center, and you, and you said, you know what, we're going to start a church, we're going to obey God, that was a miracle, was it not? It was a miracle just that, there's, that they continued to meet, and they continued to grow in that time. That's another miracle that this church has had. I just want to remind you today of the good things God has done here. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we need a reminding. Amen. God performed the Jordan River miracle for several reasons, but one of the main reasons is so that they would know that God was with them to conquer the giants of the land. They were about to take on battles and obstacles that, only, that they could only win with God by their side. Many times God will perform, perform a miracle in our lives that will give us courage and strength for the battles and victories that lie ahead. So there are three purposes or reasons why you need a guidepost or an altar in your lives. Number one is the guidepost reminds us of the faithfulness of God, thereby increasing our faith. I'm going to say that one more time. The guidepost reminds us of the faithfulness of God, thereby increases our faith. Number two, it shows our children who God is and what He has done in our lives. It proves to our children that God is real and personal. The, the, the kids of these days, the kids of our age, they don't want a God that's just religion, do this, do that, good and, and what's right, what's wrong. That's not interesting to them. It's a waste of time. Our kids want a, want a relationship with God Almighty. They want to, I believe that if they knew that our God was real, if they knew that our God was personal, I believe that they will always go back to that because there's nothing better than knowing Christ. Religion's empty, and, there's, and our kids have shown us that, right? So many people have left, but relig we don't need religion. We need Jesus. Amen. And number three, our future makes sense when we look back on everything God has done for us. Amen. God does everything in our lives with a purpose. Amen. 
and he is not mindlessly experimenting with our lives. Right. Nothing takes him by surprise, and there is an order to everything he does. Even when things don't make sense, he's not putting you in a circle like this. Well, I'm going to see what, how he handles this, or I'm going to see what happens here. No, there's a purpose to everything he, he does. Psalm 37, verse 23 and 24 says, The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. If you're a believer here today, you can rest and you can know that your steps are ordered of God. He's, you know, even, even when we take a, a wrong step, he's a good shepherd, and he leaves a 99 to bring you back. As we look at all God has done for us and how He has led, suddenly our present and future makes more sense. Our past storm or trial makes way more sense after going through the storm than when you're in the midst of the storm. When you're in the midst of your storm, things don't make sense a lot of times. You just want to get out of it. But then once you go through it, you're like, wow, this is what God was doing in me. This is what He was doing there. It just, I think it's important for us to look back and see, and just have a good perspective of what we went through. And I'm going to quote Henry Blackaby. And he said, and in regards to God working in order, God works in sequence to accomplish His divine purposes. What He did in the past was accomplished with a kingdom purpose in mind. What He is doing in the present is in sequence with the past and with the same kingdom purpose. Every act of God builds on the past with a view towards the future. When God is ready for you to take a, take a new step or direction in His activity, it will always be in sequence with what He has already been doing in your life. He does not go off on tangents or take meaningless detours. He builds your character in an orderly fashion with a divine purpose in mind. Sometimes, now He said He doesn't take us on detours. He doesn't take us on meaningless detours. Sometimes it may seem like you're in a detour in this life that really makes no sense. And the thing is, you do go through detours. You go through these things that are hard to, hard to understand, hard to be like, okay, God, what's, what are you doing here? This, this hurts. This stinks. <laughs> However, like Joseph when he was sold by his brothers, like Joseph when he was uh, thrown into prison for being falsely accused, I'm going to put it to you today that those detours are very important for you and there's a purpose in the midst of them. How many know that if Joseph would not have been sold into slavery by his brothers and betrayed, if he wouldn't have been falsely accused, he would have never been in Egypt. And he would have, because here's the thing, if Joseph would have been told by God to go to Egypt, he might have done that, but he wouldn't have had the ability or the capability to be in charge, right? right. God knew, one, he was developing his character. Are you going to be able to lead when people accuse you? Are you going to be able to lead when people betray you? But two, he was also, uh, he, he knew it was up ahead. And he knew that, that Joseph was going to need, need to be in charge. And so he had to get him from point A to point 16 and a half. I went from letter to number, but whatever. He needed to get him from A to Z. But in order to get him there, he had to go one step at a time. So I just want to put it to you today that in everything that God has done in your life, there's a purpose to it. That, that he's not just wasting your time with whatever. Sometimes we waste time, but He never wastes our time. Yeah. Amen. It can be extremely comforting when life is hard. And it isn't making any sense to know that God has a purpose in that season. So many times, even in my short life, there have been times that haven't made any sense when people, you know, they falsely accuse you or I mean, it can be anything, and things don't make sense. But then after you go through it, it, it just is like, wow, I'm a lot stronger. I'm a better person because of it. I, I have more integrity because I went through that. Joshua 6, I'm just going to go ahead now to Joshua 6. Joshua 6, the fall of Jericho after the miracle was another miracle. You know, the funny thing I'm seeing in Joshua is sometimes the Lord has us do some crazy things out there just so that he can get the glory. Amen. Joshua 6, what he asked them to do? March around a town seven days in a row, and the seventh day do it seven times, and then blow your trumpets, and then I'm going to give you victory. Okay, that seems pretty crazy. Can you imagine if the Lord told us to do that somewhere at the school or something? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense, logically speaking, right? 
However, God asked him to do something that only he could get the glory in. God asked him to do something that only he would uh, yeah, they'd have to point back to him on. Amen. And so here's another miracle in our life, and they wrote it down. They had a guidepost in Joshua. And it's, it's essentially the same thing here with the church, right? When we moved here in this building, that's another miracle of God. I think it's a miracle of God. Amen. And, and so, like, my point is this. Okay, you have one miracle after another, but they're building on top of each other. And there's a purpose. He's leading us somewhere, right? Joshua 10. The sun stands still. It's another miracle. If the sun stood still for 24 hours, unless you're in Alaska, that's a pretty big deal. Amen. Right? The fact that this, I mean, that could be anything here in this church as well, right? I mean, am I right? The, the building's paid off? Yep. The building has been paid off in five years. Amen. That's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. It could be anything else. It could be, I mean, maybe you, you gave your life to Christ here. Maybe you got filled with the Holy Spirit here. Maybe you were born again while attending this church. I don't know what the miracle is, but I'm just going to tell you today that there is miracle after miracle, and we need to remind ourselves of the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. So that leads us to where are we today? Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. <clears throat> now Joshua was old and well advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, You are old and advanced in years, but very much of the land still remains to be possessed. This is the land that remains, all the districts of the Philistines, and it just goes on and on and says, listen, you've done well. You have, you have walked with me. You have allowed me to uh, give you so much of the land, so much of the inheritance I promised you. You have, you have taken a lot of land. But even though it's, it would be easy for us to stop, I have so much more for you. I believe he wants, he's telling you guys here today, God has so much more for this church. He, he has so much more for you on a personal level. He's not done with us. He's not, he doesn't want us to just be content because we've taken a lot of land. He wants us to continue to get the full inheritance He has for us. Amen. God's purpose is just beginning for this church. And it can be easy to look at the day by day and settle into a complacency. We must protect ourselves from complacency. There has been many teams throughout the years. They win a championship or two and they become complacent. And when that happens, the, the, the tendency, not everyone, but the tendency is to become less disciplined and focus more on what was accomplished than on the, the new challenges that lie ahead. Because they focus on the past and not the challenge ahead, they were taken down to win their championship. We must take guard against complacency. It is important that we do not get stuck looking back at good times, the good times that, they, that they used to be. Yes, we need to treasure them. Yes, we need to see how far we've come. How many know, okay, when you became a believer, okay, if you think back eight years ago, I was, I was walking with the devil. I wasn't walking with God, or I was following myself as a God, whatever. At the end of the day, if, if you would have told me eight years ago that I was gonna, I would, be, I would preach, or I would be a Christian even, or the goodness, the good things that God has done in my life, I would call you crazy. I'd probably call you high. <laughs> but seriously, though, I mean, it's amazing to think about. When we think back on who, how, where God has taken us to where we are today, it's amazing. And, and you know, sometimes we can get so caught up in, you know, I'm struggling with this today, I'm struggling with that, I, I'm frustrated with this. Let's think back on what God has done for us. Let's think back on where He's taken us, because I can tell you, He's not finished with us, He's continuing to take us on. Amen. So where are you at today? Are you, are you among those that are, you know, you're just getting by day by day? And, and, and you're forgetting that God is with you and walking with you and He has purpose for you? Or are you among those who just want to take the full inheritance that God has for us? One of my burdens that I have, honestly, I have this burden uh, has been stronger and stronger as I've been different places and seen different churches. But there are many Christians who are living far short of what God has called them to. They're Christians, 
but they're not living in the full inheritance of what God has for them. They have not realized, first of all, part of it is because they don't realize who they are. They don't realize that they're beloved of the King of, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They don't realize that God's Spirit lives inside of them. They don't realize that, uh, honestly, God, is, God has amazing plans for them. And God has amazing plans for each and every single one of us. I don't care if you're 7. I don't care if you're 80. I don't care how old you are. God still has plans for you until the day He calls you home. If He didn't, He would have called you home by now. Amen. And I just want to have this illustration here at the end. But can you imagine, and, and it, so I'm going to liken God to a, to a grandfather. Can you imagine at Christmas time or whenever, the grandfather gives a thousand gifts to a, a kid, right? But at the end of the day, the grandkid just says, no, I don't want the rest of them. I just want one little toy. He only wants one of those toys, but there's 999 more that God or a grandfather gave him. Some Christians here today or around the world, we're, we're settling for one toy. When in reality, God has 999 more he wants to give us. He's a good God, guys. He's not looking to pounce on you every time you make a mistake. He's a good God, and he, he wants you to realize the full inheritance He has for you. For this church, He has a full, He has a greater inheritance for this church as well. He ain't, he ain't finished here. And he ain't finished in your lives. He has more and more for each and every single one of you. Do you believe that today? Amen. So, going back to those two things that I told you to write down. I want five people to share what they said about what God has done in this church, just so we can remind ourselves of what He's done. Any volunteers for the first one? Marlis. Paid it off in an alarmingly fast rate. Amen. It was not possible. <laughs> Let's give God a hand cap of praise. Amen. What's the, sec what's the second thing that He has done here? Yep. Anointing. He's anointed our pastor. Amen. Amen. Dan. I said what you said, you know, just the fact that it was founded at all. Yeah. You know, it's from a small group of people and going down to Nielsen and coming here. I mean, the fact that it's here is kind of happening. Absolutely. It is a miracle. It's good to get God a hand clap. Yeah. Melissa. Uh, I, I thought of the fact that we, didn't, we don't keep what, we, what God has provided for us here. People have been sent out to share that message, like yourself, like Steve Sweat, you know. So it's important that we don't just keep our guests here, we've shared them. So. Amen. Yeah. Gotta have a couple of praise. Krista. I'll take you back kind of off of what Dan said, in that I think God was working through it all because I know I personally told Aaron when he told us that he was thinking about, it, like, Aaron, you're crazy. There's no way you can do that and support your family and he needs a different job, a steady job and God worked through that for him and there they are. So yeah. I told him to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yep. He expanded the radio ministry to mm. Amen. Amen. Right. Anything else? James? have this place where it's highly visible for the entire community to see and like honestly everybody can't run away from it I mean it's, it's on the radio I mean that's, that's actually a huge one like on the radio for everybody to hear amen any other testimonies about what God has done for this church Ray when we was redoing this church, all the countless days that we put in, God was there when we started getting tired of pouring equipment in. We kept going, we put in hours upon hours. And we just he gave us the strength to keep going. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Perseverance. Amen. Perseverance. Anything else as far as what God has done for the church? Samantha. I don't know if someone said this. Yep. Um, but just like the quality of like the, the teaching and the depth there is just like unheard of for this area and so just well yeah evangelists but just like the ex 
what Pastor has been exposed to, like the richness there in a small town Nebraska, like that's that is a God thing, absolutely. Pretty unheard of. Yep. Amen. Amen. Joe and Melissa. So Joe then Melissa. All right. Um, you know, for, for me personally, uh, I wrote down for bringing me to West Point and, and you know, what that involved. But, you know, it's more that that God, you know, it's not just the physical place. It is this body that he has brought together in these last times. Uh, I'm just so encouraged by that. And, and like I said, in bringing me into it, I'm so blessed. You know, th this is my family. Amen. Oh, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Melissa? Uh, just when God gave us the sound system, we yeah. had Amen. something available to us, but God wanted us to have even better. He gave us the, the TVs, the, the soundboard, the microphones that are right. all yeah. you know, very top of the line. So that's a blessing we couldn't have done. Amen. Amen. Praise God.